Well, we've been in this series, Made for More, and our, kind of our foundational verse in Matthew 16, 18, Jesus said, I will build my church, and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. So just being a part of the church, you're on the winning team. That is awesome, and it's, it's great. So in this series, we've been talking about the church. And if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, if you have put your faith in Jesus, you are part of the church. So you, plural, and we're just not used to that in our, 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 our modern thinking, but when I say you, I mean you. You, plural, are the church built on Jesus, a house for his presence, one body made up of many parts, each with a unique role to play, and not even death can stop you. Kind of a summary of the series we've been talking about. That's you, you plural, you are that, you are the church, capital C. So we're not, I'm talking even beyond Northwest Family Church, the church, worldwide, past present and future believers in Jesus Christ all together, the church. And that's what you're a part of, something way bigger than yourself and even bigger than our congregation. That's, that's amazing and that is awesome. It's an awesome thing to be part of the church. Now, as a pastor, one of the fun things that I get to do is perform weddings and over the years, uh, I, I, it's just, I've just, I have lots of fond memories of the weddings I performed. Uh, but when a couple first comes to me, usually the very first meeting that they have with me, is going to talk about a potential wedding. Do you know what's the one thing that's on their mind? The date. That's the most important thing. Like, that is the one thing. They're coming to me hoping against all hope that I will be available on this date. And sometimes it's because they have a certain venue for the, the ceremony or the rehearsal, and it's only available on this date. Or sometimes it is a, a certain anniversary, like it's exactly one year after they met, or it's a holiday, it's Valentine's Day or New Year's Eve or something. But man, the couple, that's the, that overshadows everything else. I'm thinking compatibility. I mean, there are some other issues that might be good to address, but on, there's only one thing on the couple's mind. It is the date. But it was very different in Jesus' day. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more as we go along today because today I want to talk to you about the church is the bride of Christ. The church is the bride of Christ. Now, if you're not used to that term, that is very strange sounding. I get it. It is, it is strange sounding. But you, plural, the church. The Bible says you are the bride of Christ. So we're going to look at a specific passage here in a moment. Why don't you take that out? If you, if you have a Bible or a Bible on a smartphone, turn to Revelation 19, verses 6 to 9. And if you're in a smartphone, you can choose the translation. We always read from the NLT translation, so you can dial that up specifically. So we're going to get that to that in a minute, but I want to lay a little bit of background, a little bit of context for that. Marriage, according to the Bible, is an illustration of the relationship between Jesus and the church. Marriage illustrates that relationship, and on the flip side, the relationship between Jesus and the church is the model for marriage. Marriage is a very big deal to God. In Ephesians chapter 5, 21 to 33, it talks about this whole thing and really develops it quite a bit. And it talks about how the husband is to love his wife. Now, we think love, oh, that means you bought her a Hallmark card. That is not what it's talking about. Love, the husband is to love his wife and actually lay down his life for her. Be willing to die for her. Be willing to die to selfishness for her. The husband lays down his life for his wife. The husband cares for his, for his wife. In the same way, somebody say same way. Same way. The same way that Jesus loves, 
the church. Jesus lays down his life for the church. Jesus cares for the church. The same way that Jesus does that, the husband is to love his wife and do that for his wife. In Ephesians chapter 5, verses 25 and 27, it says, For husbands, this means love your wives just as Christ loved the church. He gave up his life for her. And skipping down to 27, he, Jesus, did this to present her, to present the church to himself as a glorious church without a spot or wrinkle or any other blemish. Instead, she will be holy and without fault. And you hear that wedding language that Jesus is going to present the church to himself without spot or wrinkle. And that's what we picture, a perfectly white, crisp wedding dress with no spot, no stains, no wrinkles for that ceremony. And Jesus is saying that's a picture of what he does for the church. Now, wives, I'm not leaving you out. In this same passage, it talks about how wives are to submit to the leadership of their husband and respect him. And it doesn't say anything about feelings. It just says that's what the wife is to do. In the same way that, they would, that wives would submit and respect Jesus. That's, wow. This is very intense for husbands and very intense for wives. Ephesians 5.32 says, this is a great mystery, but it is an illustration of the way Christ and the church are one. So Jesus and the church are the role model for marriage, and marriage is an illustration of the relationship between Jesus and the church. Now, the book of Revelation, where I asked you to turn to a few minutes ago, Revelation 19, the whole book of Re Revelation in the Bible tells about the future and the end of the age, the end of the world, really, and, what, and sort of like the ultimate what happens to the church. It's in Revelation. It also shows us the clearest pictures of, the, of how the church is the bride of Christ, the overall message of Revelation, if you think about it, there's, there's, there's probably different ways you could go, but one overall message is this. Stay faithful to God no matter what happens. And that is a message for today. Stay faithful to God no matter what happens. Just the same way that we're to stay faithful to our spouse. All right, so Revelation 19, verses 6 to 9. So this is, a, this is uh, talking about a future event, but he talks about it in past tense because he saw the uh, John, the writer down, the one who wrote down, saw this vision, but it's about something that happens in the future. And he says, Then I heard again what sounded like the shout of a vast crowd, or the roar of mighty ocean waves, or the crash of loud thunder. And this is what, they, what those loud voices were saying. Praise the Lord! For the Lord our God, the Almighty, reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice and let us give honor to him. I don't know what your vision or your where your imagination goes when you think of heaven. But if you think of heaven as a very quiet, silent place with fluffy clouds and no one ever raises their voice... That's not heaven. That's not the heaven that's described in the Bible. Heaven is actually a really loud, crazy, thunders, lightnings, craziness place. It is an amazing sensory overload in heaven. And John, who's writing this down, says it was like the whole world was singing at one time. And what are they singing? They're singing, praise the Lord. God is so good. Let's rejoice. Let's have a party. Let's shout. Let's laugh. Let's rejoice why? Because the wedding, the time has come for the wedding feast of the Lamb. Who is the Lamb? Jesus is the Lamb. He is the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. So rejoice, for the time has come for the wedding feast of the Lamb, and his bride has prepared herself. She has been given, now who's, who's the bride? Remember, who's the bride? She has been given the finest of pure white linen to wear. For the fine linen represents the good deeds of God's holy people. And there he circles back around. Make one more time, just if you weren't sure who the bride is, the bride of Christ is God's holy people. In verse 9, and the angel said to me, write 
this. Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding feast of the Lamb. And he added, these are true words that come from God. Man, this is a really cool scene in heaven. All this rejoicing and loudness and laughter. There's going to be great rejoicing in heaven when it's time for this wedding feast that was just talked about, the wedding feast of the Lamb. Now, in Jesus' day, and when this would have been first written down, the idea of a wedding was very different in their minds than it is in ours. In Jesus' day, the, uh, a Jewish wedding happened in three phases. The, uh, the betrothal, the wedding, and the wedding feast. And there were other different things that were sometimes, uh, sometimes done, but those are kind of the three main parts of a Jewish wedding in that day. And this passage in Revelation talks about the final phase, the last part, the wedding feast. So I'm going to start there. I'm going to work backwards to today. Okay, so, the, so point number three, <laughs> the wedding feast. Jesus is going to celebrate with you, plural. Jesus is going to celebrate with you, plural, the church, capital C, the church. Man, this is in our future, and it has been called the blessed hope, the blessed hope. That Jesus is, is going to one day, we're going to be with him uh, forever and ever in heaven and eternity. One day in heaven, we are going to sit down to a great celebration feast. I don't know uh, if you've ever seen this painting but, or this doctored up photo. In, uh, when I was younger, there was, it was on everybody's, uh, on the wall of every Christian's home. It was a super long table with gold plates and gold candelabra. Uh, and it was set, no people at it yet, but the picture made it look like it just goes on for eternity. This table for the wedding feast of the Lamb. Amen. Pretty cool. Pretty cool idea. We're going to sit down in heaven to this great feast with people from every nation and every era of time who have put their faith in Jesus, believers in Jesus from every nation on earth to celebrate our union, I'm using that word specifically, with Jesus face to face. It's going to be awesome. When you think about Jesus' life and ministry, it's interesting that the very first miracle that we have recorded that Jesus did was at a wedding. It was at a wedding feast specifically. And it's talked about in John chapter 2, if you want to read the whole story. And this was when he turned water into wine. It's as if at the beginning of Jesus' ministry, Jesus gave us a glimpse of the end, the future wedding feast in heaven. And you see this, uh, I, I don't have time to go into the whole story right now, but you see this in the quality and the quantity of what Jesus did at that wedding. He, they, they had run out of, of wine, and in that day they would have had wedding, a wine at a wedding. And they had run out of wine, and all they had was some stone water jars. And the Bible tells us how big they are. And Jesus said, fill them with water and dip it out as if it was wine. And it, it became that water was turned into wine. Somewhere, the Bible says, between 120 and 180 gallons of wine. So that's six standard exterior home garbage cans that were water now turned into wine. And when the MC at the, at the wedding feast tasted it, he said, oh, oh, what? This is the best wine I've ever tasted. This is way better than everything else we serve today. So in the quality and the quantity of what was done at that wedding feast, we see a picture of the quantity and the quality of the future wedding feast of the Lamb in heaven. It's going to be heavenly. It's going to be joyful. It's going to be abundant. There's going to be no lack. It is going to be an awesome wedding feast. And that we have that to look forward to, the joy of that day and that celebration. All right, point number two, the wedding. All right, so the second phase is the wedding. And you, plural, are going to see Jesus face to face. Right now, it's all by faith. Uh, the disciples got to see him a long time ago, but for us, it's mostly by faith. And there's going to come a day when you're going to actually be with Jesus 
face to face. No more veil, no more hiddenness. You're going to see him as he is. In the Bible, 1 Thessalonians 4 tells us that the Lord is going to come down from heaven with a loud shout. He doesn't tell us what the shout is, but I bet it's something like, come join me, something like that. Arise, come and be with me. And there's going to be a trumpet blast heard around the world, and Christians dead and alive, are going to rise to meet Jesus in the air. That's going to be so awesome. I just can't even imagine how great and how exciting that is going to be. Wow. We're going to be with Jesus forever. And the union of Jesus and the church, sometimes it's called the rapture. I believe that's the wedding. That is where we get to go be joined with Jesus face to face forever. So now today, in our society, couples are mostly concerned about the date. Like, oh, we got to get the date right so I can get the invitation, so I can get the photographer. Nothing happens until I have the date. It's the date, the date, the date. But not in Jesus' day. It was a very, very different perspective. The focus was not on the date. It was on the preparations. The date of a wedding was driven by the preparations. So in other words, when we're ready, then the wedding's going to happen. When the father of the groom says everything is ready, when he puts a stamp of approval, he would give the consent for his son to go get his bride. And that's when you would know when the wedding date was. It was when they were ready. And until they were ready, they weren't coming. And you can see hints of this. Uh, Jesus actually talked about weddings many times in parables and in doing the miracle at the wedding. He he talks about weddings a lot. Uh, But you can see it in in Matthew chapter 25 where he used a teaching story. We call it a parable of the ten virgins. These were ten young women who were the wedding party of a bride. All right? So they they were a wedding party. And uh, the wise gals stayed ready because they didn't know when the wedding was, but they just stayed ready. They were ready to, they were watching for the groom. The foolish ones did not stay ready and it didn't turn out so well for them. So that's just, uh, just a, a, a picture of this, of it's, when it's ready, that's when it happens. Uh, just before Jesus went to the cross, he told his disciples that he was going to go prepare a place for us in his father's house. In John chapter 14 is where it's written down, verse 3. He said, when everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am. What's the date? What's the hour? It's when it's ready. That's when it will be. Okay, now point one. Step one, the betrothal. The betrothal. You, plural, as a church, you have a committed covenant relationship with Jesus now. That's the betrothal. You have a committed covenant relationship with Jesus. Now, today in our society, we don't have betrothal so much. We have what we call engagement. But unfortunately, even that has lost some of its meaning in our time because so many times today, it's just when, 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 when two people are living together, they just call each other fiancés. And so even engagement's kind of lost its meaning from what it, what it used to mean. But in Jesus' day, they didn't have that. The people didn't become engaged, they became betrothed. And a betrothal was they actually entered into a formal covenant with a signed agreement, a contract, and a ceremony, a celebration for the betrothal. Uh, during certain periods of time, the betrothal was bigger than the wedding, was a bigger celebration than the wedding, because that's when they became bound legally bound together. And it was a betrothal was only broken off in very serious situations. If the man died while they were still betrothed, not married yet, not living together yet, if a man died, they would call that woman a widow. If, if they broke off a betrothal, they would call it a divorce. And we know the story of Joseph and Mary. In the, in the Bible, Jesus' parents, they were betrothed. Uh, In some of our modern translations, it says uh, they were engaged to be married. That is not the word. That is doctored up a bit so that we would understand. The word is they were betrothed. And so when Joseph found out that Mary was pregnant by, and the baby was not his, 
he had in mind to what? Divorce her. To divorce her quietly. They were betrothed. The word was not break up. Not like break up our girlfriend thing. Betrothal. It was a, it was a legal bound thing. And, and so he was going to have mercy on her and just do a, divorce her quietly. They would have had to go and like have a ceremony and, you know, like before a judge or whatever, the elders, and break it. So it's a, betrothal is a big deal in Jesus' time. What happened during the betrothal? Why is there a betrothal period? It usually took about a year for the betrothal period. And what was happening was the husband's job in the betrothal period was to go make a home to bring his bride to. And typically in that day, it would have meant physically building on adding an addition to his father's family home. So we don't know when the wedding can be because we don't know how long it's going to take to build that thing. I don't know if they were going out and like making bricks or like chopping down trees and then playing in them. I don't know what, but it was apparently a long involved process. And the son, that was the son's job, the, the, one, the, uh, the husband's job, the future husband's job, uh, to go build that house. And uh, until, uh, even when he said it's finished, it's not finished, till his father, the father of the groom says, okay, I, I put my blessing on this, it's finished, it's ready go get your bride. Now we'll set up the wedding. Today, as the bride of Christ, the church and Jesus are in the betrothal period. We're not just engaged. We're not just boyfriend, girlfriend. We are betrothed. We are in covenant, committed relationship with Jesus Christ right now. And Jesus told us what he's doing. In John chapter 14, I didn't read all the rest of the verses. He said, I am preparing a place for you, a room for you in my father's house. Can you see how he was using marriage language, wedding language, when he said that? He, he, he said, uh, and, and, when he, and it's kind of interesting, when he told the disciples that, uh, I, I'm going to prepare a place for you in my father's house, and when it's ready, I will bring you to myself. They didn't say, when will that be? They knew when. When it was ready. <laughs> when the place is ready. When the preparations are ready, he will come. They instead asked, well, where? So they, they went down a different direction. They already knew the when. The when was when the Father's ready. He will send you. No one uh, ex except the Father knows that date. Okay, so Jesus is doing that. He is preparing the place for us. We, the church, the bride of Christ, are preparing ourselves. How do I know this? Because we just read in the book of Revelation, the bride has been preparing herself. So it's going to happen. We are one way or another. We are preparing ourselves right now. But we're not shopping for a wedding dress. But we are working on our attire, our clothing. And in, in Revelation 19, it's, uh, I read it earlier, it says that our, our wedding attire will be the good deeds of God's holy people. Yeah. We're going to be dressed in white because of what we are doing now during the betrothal period. In the Amplified Bible, it's, it's a, it is a translation of the Bible that, that uh, just points to, to other nuances of the original languages the Bible is written in. The same verse talks about our, our attire is the righteousness, that is, the upright, just, and godly living, deeds, and conduct, and our right standing with God. That is what we are going to be dressed in, godly living, good deeds. It's more than just good deeds. It's righteous living for God. That's our clothing when we stand before Jesus at the wedding of the Jesus, of the Lamb, and the church. I want to make sure that you know, though, we're not saved by those works. We're saved by faith in Jesus. We do good works because we're saved. Yeah. Does that make sense? We do good works because we're saved. Yeah. No one except our Heavenly Father knows the date or the hour of the wedding of Jesus and the church, the rapture, when he's coming back. It will happen when he says, we're ready. It's ready. Go. So it's important that the church stay ready. And that's why Jesus told us that parable of the ten virgins to make sure that we knew we have to stay ready for him. How do you stay ready? You, you um, love God with all your heart. 
Love your neighbor as yourself. Yeah. You put off your old self, your selfishness, your, your uh, flesh, fleshly life. You put off that and you put on good deeds. You put on Jesus. You're clothed with Jesus. And we work on the mission God gave us, sharing Jesus, growing together. We work on that. We do those things because we're saved. As I was preparing for this message today and thinking about how awesome it's going to be when we, when Jesus says, come, and we just shoot out of here, and we just go meet the Lord in the air, and we will forever be with him. Wow, how awesome that's going to be. My mind turned back to today, and today we are living in one of the hardest times I can remember in my lifetime. I uh, and, and I lived through the 70s, okay? <laughs> uh, this is worse. We, we complained when we had to line up for gas every other day, odd or, odd or even days, and this is so much, so much more beyond that. Life is hard. Many of you have suffered from actually being sick from COVID. Many of you have felt the ripple effects of COVID, those of you who prefer not to get the, the COVID vaccine, you are faced, I, I can't even believe this is, a, this is a choice now, but you are faced, many of you, with losing your job. Get the vaccine or lose your job. This past week, 3% of Washington State employees were either fired or walked away from their job. They left their job because of their choice to, to not be vaccinated. Small businesses are struggling. Some of you have lost people that you love. But when life is hard, and I think it's, it's pretty hard right now. When life is hard, it helps to remember that you are made for more. This is not all there is. And even though days sometimes drag by, once you hit eternity, this lifetime is going to seem so small and insignificant compared to life in heaven face to face with Jesus forever. Yeah. I alluded to this chapter before. I'm going to read just a couple of verses from it. 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 17 to 18. Then together with them, we who are still alive and remain on the earth will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And then we will be with the Lord forever. Listen to this. So encourage each other with these words. And I knew that uh, I wanted to be able to talk about the bride of Christ uh, since, we've been, we've been, since we've been talking about the church in this series. And I saved it for last. And I can see now, looking back, that God had a good timing for this. This is when we need to remember this is not all there is. There's something better coming. It's a promise, and Jesus keeps his promises. We just don't know the day or the hour, but literally, it could be now. That we hear the shout of God, the trumpet call of God, the voice of the archangel, and Jesus comes, and we rise to meet him in the air. It could be any moment. What a day that will be. Oh, I can't wait. So for just a moment, I encourage you to take your eyes off the pain and put them on the prize. If even just for a moment, when you're feeling so down, when you're feeling frustrated, when you're feeling anxious, look up. For your redemption draws near, the Bible says. Shelly and I just got back from a week of vacation a couple weeks ago. And as it is with every vacation, we had all these hopes and dreams and plans. Like this was, gonna, this was just going to solve everything. We're going to be totally refreshed, totally rested. It's just going to be per pretty much heaven on earth. Well, it didn't really turn out that way. <laughs> Due to a raging stomach flu that I got and then graciously passed on to Shelly, that wiped out two full days. And then in between those two days, it was Hurricane Pamela. So we weren't in the eye of the storm, but we were on the edge of it. Uh, we went to the market that day, and uh, it was a good thing we wore flip-flops because we were in like a foot of water, 
because of a deluge of rain. Okay, this vacation did not really turn out exactly as we had planned. And when we got back, I was talking about that with one of my mentors. And he said, Garen, this is what you do. Right now, go put your next vacation on the calendar. Because just knowing it's coming will give you rest. Wow. I think about how we're at the edge of the holidays. Part of the joy of Christmas is the anticipation. The anticipation is a part of it. It's part of what makes it so special. And it's part of the joy. In the same way, just knowing that the wedding feast of the Lamb is coming can give you peace and joy in hard times. So look up and look forward to what God is preparing for you. He's getting ready. He's getting ready. Would you stand to your feet? I want to just pray for you. If you're in the room, stand. And uh, online, let's pray. Make where you are a place of prayer. And I want to just pray for you. Would you bow your heads with me? And let's just focus on God for a moment here. Lord Jesus, I just want to thank you so much for these promises in your word that we've read about today. We cannot wait to see you face to face. I cannot wait to hear your shout and, and the shout of the archangel and the trumpet call of God. I can't wait to shoot through the air and meet you in the air. It's just so fantastic. It's so otherworldly and so heavenly and joyful, Lord. We cannot wait Thank you for, for just giving us so much detail and, and, and uh, so many hints that you actually have increased the joy by increasing the anticipation. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I pray that we, your church, would live ready. That not only individually, but just that we as a group would do righteous things, that we would live righteously, that we would love you, love others, love ourselves, that we would put off our old selves, put off our selfishness, and truly love people in word and deed. Lord, help us to be dressed in white. We are preparing ourselves, Lord, so help us to repair well. We want to be spotless and glorious and holy and set apart for you when you return. We are your church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Church, could you just give God just a little bit of praise? Just thank him. Just tell him what's on your heart about uh, your anticipation of that wedding feast. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we look forward to that day, and we know that it's going to be awesome. We pray it would be soon. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. So one more thing I want to pray about today. And I don't know if you're in the bride of Christ yet. You were not born the first time into it. You need to be born again. We're all born sinners. We all need a Savior. So Jesus paid the price, took the penalty for your sins and my sins. And he just asks that you put your faith in his sacrifice. And that is what saves you. And I want to invite you today to, to be saved to put your faith in Jesus, to trust in him for not only this life, but the life to come. I want to invite you to become a part of the bride of Christ. And one of the, one of the, uh, the great um, uh, pictures of what it means in this life is to be an apprentice. I want to invite you to be an apprentice of Jesus, someone who studies him, follows him, imitates him, walks with him, works with him. If you have not yet put your faith in Jesus, I want to invite you to do that today. You just simply turn away from your sin, turn your life over to Jesus, and let him lead. Turn away from your sin, turn your life over to Jesus, and let him lead. Are you ready to do that today? Would you bow your heads, everybody? Christians are praying. And if you today would like to put your faith in Jesus to become a Christian, to be part of the bride of Christ, would you raise your hand so I know who I'm praying for uh, if in the room? That's helpful. And then online, would you raise your hand to God? and I'm going to lead you in a prayer as well. I'd love to just lead you in a prayer, uh, and let's just repeat after me. I'll, I'll coach you, and you, you pray after me, but pray to God. Speak to God. Let's do it together. Here we go. Jesus, I invite you into my life. Please forgive me 
of my sin and make me new. I choose to follow you and be your apprentice, a part of your bride, starting now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And if you prayed that prayer, we say welcome to the bride of Christ. Welcome to the family of God. Would you just let me know if you prayed that prayer, whether you're in the room or online, would you text the word restart to, the, to our texting phone number, 97,000, and follow the prompts, and that'll just let me know of the decision that, that you're made. God bless you. Thanks, Pastor Garen. You know, it's so, yeah, it's so encouraging. It's so encouraging to know, just to know that it's coming. When we know it's coming, that's when we have the hope. That's when we have the joy. Just knowing we're going to be, be joined with Christ as the beautiful bride. Oh, that's wonderful. Praise the Lord. Well, hey, once again, I just want to remind you, if, you're, if it's your first time here, just text that word GREET to 97000 so we can connect with you. Also, if you're helping out with the fall festival next week, or you would like to, it's not too late to sign up, would you just meet up here right now, right now, right after service, and Tori's just going to have a few words to share with us just to get ready, get prepped, get pumped for next week. Hey, it was so good to see you this week, and I'll see you next week. God bless you. Oh, yeah, get your kids first. If you have kids, go grab your kids and bring them here.